Welcome to Eye Care Central. In this video, we will be discussing the blood supply of retina. We will talk about the arterial supply of retina, its venous drainage, the pathophysiology of cherry red spot, and also a little bit about the ciliary retinal arteries. So let's begin. These are all the ten layers of retina as we see on the OCT. Now I am using this picture just so we can revise the layers of retina. Even if you are not familiar with OCTs, that will not make any difference to your understanding of this video. So as we go from top to bottom, we are going from the innermost to the outermost layer of retina. This area represents the vitreous and this depression that you can see in the center is the fovea. This is the internal limiting membrane. Below it is the nerve fiber layer. Then comes the ganglion cell layer followed by the inner plexiform layer. This hyporeflective layer is the inner nuclear layer. Below it is the outer plexiform layer followed by the outer nuclear layer. Then comes the external limiting membrane, the ISOS junction of the photoreceptors and finally the retinal pigment epithelium which is the outermost layer of the retina. And this is the chorea capillaris which lies external to the retinal pigment epithelium. So retina has a dual blood supply which means that it is supplied by two arterial systems. These two arterial systems are the central retinal artery and the posterior ciliary arteries. Both of them are branches of the ophthalmic artery. Now the retina can be divided into inner retina and outer retina. The inner retina extends from the nerve fiber layer to the inner nuclear layer while the outer retina represents mainly the photoreceptor layer. Inner retina is supplied by the central retinal artery while the outer retina is supplied by the posterior ciliary arteries. The outer plexiform layer which is situated at the junction of these two is believed to receive its blood supply from both these systems. So we know that ophthalmic artery is a branch of the internal carotid artery and central retinal artery arises from this ophthalmic artery. In the orbit, the central retinal artery pierces the optic nerve sheath to enter the optic nerve at its inferior surface. Within the optic nerve, it divides into two major trunks the superior division and the inferior division. These two divisions further branch into nasal and temporal branches to supply all the four quadrants of the retina, that is the inner retina. This retinal arterial system is a terminal system, which means that there are no arteriovenous anastomosis and no communication with any other arterial systems. Thus, the blood supply to a specific retinal quadrant comes exclusively from the specific retinal artery that supplies that quadrant and if there is any blockage of any arterial branch, it would result in infarction of that quadrant because there is no alternate blood supply available to rescue it. The central retinal artery supply does not extend beyond the outer plexiform layer and these layers of outer retina are supplied by the posterior ciliary arteries. Now just like the central retinal artery, the posterior ciliary arteries are also branches of the ophthalmic artery. They vary in number, sometimes there can be just one posterior ciliary artery or some individuals may even have 4 to 5 posterior ciliary arteries. The posterior ciliary arteries divide into long posterior ciliary arteries and short posterior ciliary arteries. The two long posterior ciliary arteries, they penetrate the sclera on either side of the optic nerve they run in the supracoroidal space and they begin to branch out. Anterior to the equator, the branches from these long posterior ciliary arteries supply the iris and the ciliary body, but some branches also reach down to the anterior part of the choroid and they terminate in the choriocapillaris. This meshwork that you can see here is the choriocapillaris and this choroidal circulation provides blood supply to the outer retina anterior to the equator. The posterior part of the outer retina, that is the part which is located behind the equator, is supplied by the short ciliary arteries. These arise from the posterior ciliary arteries and they are about 16 to 20 in number. They penetrate the sclera and they send their branches that reach the choroid, terminating into the choriocapillaris, providing nourishment to the outer retina. So to repeat, the inner retina is supplied by the central retinal artery while the outer retina is supplied by the posterior ciliary arteries, the long posterior ciliary arteries supply the outer retina anterior to the equator, while the short posterior ciliary arteries supply the outer retina posterior to the equator. Now, an understanding of this dual blood supply helps us in understanding the pathophysiology of cherry red spot. Cherry red spot is seen in many conditions and one of them is central retinal artery occlusion.
Now we have just learned that central retinal artery supplies the inner retina. So when it gets occluded, there is ischemia of the inner retina. The inner retina turns opaque and edematous. It appears pale yellow in color as you can see here. But the outer retinal layers are not affected because they receive their blood supply from the posterior ciliary circulation. Now if we look at the fovea, we can see that here the inner retinal layers are absent. The only retinal layers that are present at the fovea besides the internal limiting membrane are the outer nuclear layer, the external limiting membrane, the photoreceptor layer and the retinal pigment epithelium. And the blood supply of these outer retinal layers are not affected in CRAO because they are not supplied by the central retinal artery. Thus, when there is inner retinal opacification in CRAO, the reddish color of the vascular choroid and the RPE remain visible through the foveola, which is surrounded by an area of the white opacified retina, giving it a typical cherry red spot appearance. But what happens in case of ophthalmic artery occlusion? Since both the central retinal artery as well as the posterior ciliary arteries are branches of the ophthalmic artery, thus in case of an ophthalmic artery occlusion, both the inner retinal and the outer retinal blood supplies are obstructed and thus no cherry red spot is seen in ophthalmic artery occlusion because both the retina as well as the choroid are deprived of their blood supply and turn ischemic. Let's talk about the venous drainage now. Just like arterial supply, there are two separate routes of venous drainage also. Venous drainage of the inner retina starts from the branch retinal veins. From the branch retinal veins, the venous drainage goes into the central retinal vein which exits the globe through the optic nerve and then emerges out of its meningeal sheath to drain into the cavernous sinus. Drainage from the outer retina and the choroid occurs via the vortex veins which are usually seven in number. They exit the sclera at the equator and they drain into the superior and the inferior ophthalmic veins which eventually drain into the cavernous sinus too. Now let's discuss a little about the ciliaretinal artery. Ciliaretinal artery is the most common congenital vascular anomaly of the retina and it is seen in up to 6-32% of the individuals. It mostly arises from the posterior ciliary arteries but sometimes it can even arise from the choroid. On fundoscopic examination, ciliaretinal artery is seen arising from the temporal margin of the optic disc and then it forms a sharp loop before extending outwards. This loop is an important characteristic feature of the ciliaretinal artery. Also, the ciliaretinal artery does not have any direct connection to the central retinal artery. Uncommonly, multiple ciliaretinal arteries may be present in one eye. Rarely, it can be present at the nasal margin of the optic disc. Bilateral ciliaretinal arteries are seen in about 14-18% to 18 of the cases. Ciliaretinal artery provides nourishment to the inner retina. It commonly supplies the fovea, sometimes inferior part of the temporal retina. Sometimes it may supply just a little area temporal to the optic disc. Importance of ciliaretinal artery is evident in cases of central retinal artery occlusion, where severe vision loss can be prevented by the presence of a ciliaretinal artery because it provides an alternate source of blood supply to the fovea. You can see in this picture that this patient has a central retinal artery occlusion. The whole of the retina is opaque because of ischemia of the inner retinal layers, except for this small area around the fovea because it is supplied by the ciliaretinal artery which is not affected in this case because it arises from the posterior ciliary circulation. And because the ciliaretinal artery is patent, this patient would have a good central visual acuity. We call this condition CRAO with ciliaretinal artery sparing. So that is all about the blood supply of retina. Please share this video with your friends and colleagues if you found it useful. And please subscribe to my channel to support free education. Thank you very much.